thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is Amy Groves with Dover Colon Partners, and this is the Lake Wales Envision online design session. Um, so thank you uh, to everyone who's joining us tonight. I'm gonna start just with a couple of quick uh, announcements and then we'll be getting started. So again, this is uh, the Lake Wales Envisioned um, online design session. And um, this meeting tonight is being recorded. Um, so you can let anyone uh, who was not able to be with us uh, in person tonight uh, that, uh, or, uh, you know, to join live that they can watch it later. It'll be posted to lakewalesenvision.com. Uh, and also tonight, uh, at any time you have any questions, you can use the chat button in your Zoom uh, toolbar uh, to, to let us know if you're having any trouble seeing the slides or hearing or uh, participating in any way, uh, let us know. So I'm gonna take a quick minute just to thank all of our uh, project partners and co-sponsors. Again, you know, Dover Colon Partners is working for the city of Lake Wales, but they're joined by uh, a series of partners, including Thousand Friends of Florida, Lake Wales Main Street, LakeWalesNews.net, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Buck Tower, uh, the Arts Council, uh, Lake Wales Heritage, uh, University of Miami and Rollins College. I think I got, oh, Wales Point Restaurant. <laughs> so I think I got everybody there, but we wanna thank um, all the sponsors for all of their help um, this week with the charrette and um, you know getting, getting out the word and, and helping us to let people know about these meetings and, and helping uh, to carry the project forward. Um, so what are we gonna be doing tonight? I'm gonna start just with some quick introductions um, and then we're gonna recap for you what we've been hearing uh, so far this week during the Charette Week. Um, and then we'll give a little bit of food for thought on city planning. Anyone uh, who's joining us tonight who was also with us for Saturday morning, that short part of the meeting tonight will be a little bit of a, a recap for you and uh, some new information for folks who couldn't join us on Saturday. Uh, then we'll be doing some small group discussions. So we'll break into groups here on Zoom and, and talk with you about you know, what your vision for Lake Wales is and what you'd like to see in the future. Then we'll report back. So we'll uh, have one person from each group um, tell us what you talked about. So we're really looking forward to tonight. Each conversation adds to um, our understanding of, of Lake Wales and your priorities and, and what you all want to see uh, in the future for your city. So. Um, we're all excited to be to be working on this and exciting to be with you here tonight. So I'm representing a team of people and uh, others will be getting up to speak uh, here shortly um, with I uh, mentioned Dover Colon Partners uh, with us tonight, uh, Victor Dover, uh, as well as Eric Pate and Elise Dallas and Kenneth Garcia, all from our team um, here uh, listening to, to you all and uh, learning uh, what you wanna see uh, in the future. Uh, we also have with us Wade Walker from Kittleson Associates. Um, Jay Exum from Exum Associates will also be joining us. Uh, and we're also working all week this week with the group from Inspire Placemaking. So I mean, our whole team is, is, is working together and supported the city on the Lake Wales Envision effort. And so this week uh, is the Charette Week. It's a really important week. And we're asking people you know, to, to say, what if, what would you like to see uh, in the city um, in the future. And so, you know, a lot of times, uh, this is from another project in, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where we where we did a project. And, uh, you know, this is an example of, you know, an area people thought this was already done. And, um, that, you know, they, but actually, uh, you know, could think about, you know, new ways that that land could be used and uh, new possibilities for the future. And so that's what this week is about, you know, thinking about how would you like to see the city change and grow uh, in the future um, and uh, what areas you'd like to preserve and you know really what's important to you. So again, you know we're learning from each of these conversations. And you know we like to talk call the charrette a barn raising. Uh, so this is a you know a, an event that brings everyone together to focus on a common goal and um, you know it's like uh, the to to learn and and uh, and see how how you would like to see the city in the future. So we've uh, have had a series of events. Um, you know, we had an opening reception on Friday night downtown. Uh, I mentioned Saturday morning, we had our hands-on design session. That's where we rolled out base maps and did some group brainstorming. Uh, so tonight is the online version of that meeting. Um, so uh, excited to, to meet with you all and, 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 and look over um, at Google Maps and, and do some and talk about uh, your ideas. And all week we're going to be working in our studio space but really working towards um thursday night our work in progress review which is going to be at 6 p.m at the lake wales arts council auditorium so um gonna uh 
give you a little bit more information about that as we get going. But first, I wanted to give a quick recap of everything we've done so far. So I see some familiar names uh, on the Zoom call. So some of this will be repeat information for you. But um, you know, we, we started off with a kickoff meeting on March 20th, um, where we had a series of presentations on neighborhood neighborhood design and uh, the big green network. Um, you know, really, uh, you know, trying to think about how what what important things that we could be thinking about during this. Uh, visioning process. And so all of those recordings are on the Lake Wales Envisioned uh, website. If you go to lakewalesenvisioned.com slash resources. Um, during each meeting, you may have noticed that we had some posters around the room with some questions. And we asked people things like, what are your favorite places in Lake Wales and what makes them special? And here's just a sampling of some of the things people have been writing. So for example, um, the pointing out Crystal Lake Park or the bike trail. Um, the downtown area, Bach Tower, all important to people uh, in Lake Wales. Um, also asked about what opportunities um, should Lake Wales pursue in the next 10, 25, and 50 years. Um, again, just a sampling of some of the, the information and, and that people have been writing down, but uh, you know, wanting to see Lake Wales appeal to multi-generational families, uh, having more green spaces, um, using vacant buildings for uh, new development, revitalizing, um, creating a trail, greenway, um, blue way. So again, um, just uh, as I mentioned, every conversation that we have, we're learning more and more. Um, we've also asked people, what are the top challenges? Uh, here's a sampling of some of those things, um, traffic, um, concerns about growth and how the city will grow, um, planning for schools or loss of habitat and natural resources. So all things that we should, should be thinking about how to address those challenges. Um, we asked people if there were other cities or neighborhoods that you think could be a precedent for new development and be getting a lot of interesting, um, a lot of interesting responses. Here's a sampling of just a few of those. Um, you know, everything from uh, communities that have uh, strict guidelines for development, um, some specific places like um, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, or Winter Garden and Dunedin, um, so where there's um, good food, um, vibrancy, and nature. On uh, March 29th, we had a meeting, uh, a Zoom meeting with Joe Minicozzi. Joe is one of the leading economists, um, and he he looks at things in a unique way. You can see all the, the spikes on the screen here, but he, he uh, looks at the, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. This is uh, a, the a new development that we learned at at the symposium of um, ION in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And um, in Joe's analysis, uh, you can see where that development is uh, circled on the map. So he, he looks at what the property tax per acre uh, return is um, for the city. Um, so this is in the Charleston area. You can see, obviously, downtown Charleston has very tall spikes, um, lots of um, value there, value created there by the historic setting. Um, you can see all along the beach, um, very tall spikes. Obviously, the nature provides, um, you know, some uh, high property values there. But um, looking at where ION is, it's interesting because it's a, a residential neighborhood, just like the residential neighborhoods around it, but it has the highest spikes and we wonder why that is. Um, and it you know, comes down to how that area was designed. And you know, that picture I showed you of you know, how buildings relate to the street. There was a lot of um, you know, intentional design um, in ION that was done to you know, support walking and um, you know, just quality of life. And that's, um, reflected in the, um, the, this uh, you know, economist view of, of how we should look at the area. So if you're interested in seeing more stories like these, you can look at the, the Joe Minicozzi um, presentation. Again, it's on our website um, and you can learn uh, and see more about that. We've also been asking people um, to fill out these little one word cards. We had this, it's um, on our website. It's also, we've been doing it at each event this week. Uh, but you know, what is one word to describe Lake Wales today? And you can see the bigger a word gets, uh, the more people have uh, been writing down that word. So, you know, quaint, uh, potential, community, um, all things that are, uh, you know, coming up to people now. And then we asked, you know, how you would describe Lake Wales in the future. Um, and this is, you know, some of the responses we've been getting. Uh, welcoming, uh, quaint again, uh, but also vibrant and home and beautiful and unique. Uh, so we think this is an interesting uh, ice breaking uh, activity just to kind of get 
get people's thoughts uh, in motion and, and thinking about the future. So I mentioned the, the Friday night opening reception. Uh, we had a, a welcome by uh, the city manager and uh, you had a, a good group and some conversation uh, downtown under the tent uh, of, on Stewart Avenue. Uh, and that was all getting ready for Saturday. I'm gonna give you all just a, a recap of what we did on Saturday. And then, you know, we're gonna do that again uh, tonight uh, virtually. So, uh, you know, we had a, a, a good turnout, turnout, seven tables. We gathered around maps and did some exercises, you know, thinking about how the city could grow, uh, how new streets could be designed, um, how new neighborhoods could be designed and, uh, you know, the uh, just really good conversation. So. Um, the one exercise we did specifically was um, looking at how the city could grow. We gave everybody a series of sticker dots and every sticker dot represented 100 units um, or uh, about 200 people. And we, we looked at the county's population growth projections and assuming that Lake Wales might represent two to 5% of the total uh, county growth uh, in, in the future, uh, that would mean you have to around 33,000 people by the year 2050. So uh, we asked people, you know, if you could say, you know, where where would, could those people live? How do you see the city growing? Where where might that happen? So you put the stickers on, um, it could be uh, revitalization or infill in the downtown. It could be new redevelopment of existing developed areas, or it could be new development on, you know, new neighborhoods. It could be within the city limits, or in the utility service area, the only rule we gave is you had to use all 179 dots. You had to think about you know, where you would like to see that, but, but the dots could be stacked. So for example, uh, one dot deep would be um, single family homes, but uh, four dot deep would be uh, townhomes. So you know, the more dots you stacked on top of each other, obviously the, the more dense uh, housing types uh, were. Uh, we also did a design the street your way exercise where we um, gave people playing pieces for sidewalks and bike lanes and street trees uh, and uh, uh, you know, all the elements that create make, make a street. And we asked, how would you make more complete streets in the future? So we looked at some uh, existing roads and, and had people put down uh, the their, you know, and help to, to visualize how they would like to see streets designed in the future. And finally, we did a design the neighborhood exercise where we had playing pieces for blocks and public spaces. And we asked, uh, we gave a generic site and we asked, you know, how would you like to see a, a neighborhood designed in the future in Lake Wales? What, what makes a good neighborhood to you? What kinds of buildings go there? What kinds of public spaces? So uh, we got lots of really great feedback at the end of the morning on, on Saturday, we had one person from each table get up and, and summarize what their table talked about. So we could all learn, uh, you know, from each other. And I think, you know, some common themes started to emerge and we're working to, you know, summarize all that information uh, now, but uh, you can see here, we had, you know, uh, input from, you know, a variety of folks, including a kid's table. Uh, the last presentation was a great way to, to end the morning on, on Saturday. Uh, and, you know, that sticker dot exercise I mentioned to you, it's interesting to us just to see, you know, how the, the different conversations evolved at the table. Um, and here is just, you know, an example of, you know, four different tables where their, their dots were. We've been, uh, you know, starting to, to synthesize this and put this together and have a very first draft here of kind of laying all the dots on top of each other from all the tables. And you can see, um, you know, there was a, a scattering in some places, but really, you know, some themes started to emerge of, you know, putting the dots um, in the downtown or just right near the downtown or along 27. So again, we're still looking at this and trying to understand and talking with the facilitators about, you know, how the conversations went. And we're gonna ask you all in a few minutes to, to react and uh, give us your thoughts um, on, you know, where you would like to see the city grow. And so, you know, we, we've been, you know, taking all that input, we've set up a, a studio space over at the Women's Club um, where we've got uh, all the exhibits from Saturday, if you wanna come stop by and, and see them also, um, we have, uh, you know, we're going to be creating drawings and illustrations, taking all the words that people use to describe things like um, their, what they would like to see for a neighborhood or for a street and create some visuals um, for the Thursday night presentation. And, you know, during this time, we the doors are open for anyone who wants to come in and look over our shoulder and see what we're doing. We're also going to have some small group conversations. Uh, we had one this afternoon about uh, uh, 
housing and development. And uh, so again, you know, if, if, if you all are interested, the doors are open from nine to six uh, throughout the day. And all of this is working towards Thursday's uh, work in progress review. Uh, so again, uh, just a reminder, the, the website is kind of a, a summary of all this information um, and uh, where you can get up to speed on what's been happening so far. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Victor to give us just a little bit of food for thought on uh, uh, what, what we can be thinking about as we're vis visioning and, and thinking about the future. Thanks, Amy. I see many friends names on the list of people who are attending tonight. So thank you, including some folks who came to previous meetings. I'll make this brief so that uh, we can catch up the folks who are new tonight. Uh, many of you know us as the people who worked with you over the last several years on the Lake Wales Connected plan for downtown. Amy, actually show the next slide, which has the Lake Wales Connected study area uh, highlighted in red in the center. That's the downtown neighborhood and the Northwest neighborhood. Um, for the most part, looking at areas west of Highway 17, right in the core. The orange color around that, I'm sorry, Amy, could you back that up for a second, is the city limit. And then the paler orange or egg yolk color around that is the city's utility service area. So while we got together uh, and led a community-driven process to derive a good plan for downtown in the Northwest, couple of years ago, we now have a much bigger task. It's everything on this map, the, the entirety of the city's utility service area, an area over which it and the county share tremendous influence of how it will grow in the future. So this won't be as easy because it includes dealing with the uh, decline of citrus, the great pressure from Orlando and Tampa coming this way, uh, the, the demand for new subdivisions uh, and the like. So we're we're sorting that in our work tonight. Amy? Uh, if you want to know more about the Lake Wales Connected plan, you can go online and uh, you can find this on the city's website or the CRA or the Main Street organization or at dovercole.com and take a look. I think these documents are also resources that are available on the lakewalesenvisioned.com website. Now, when we superimpose that outer line, the city's utility service area over an aerial photograph, it looks like this. And for anybody who stood on the, on the shore of Lake Wales itself in Lake Wales Park and looked across the water, that's that little dark green area in the center of the map. Um, that's Lake Wales, uh, the lake. And you can get an idea just how big this study area is. But let's compare it to some other familiar landmarks. First, uh, just uh, sliding that yellow line at the same scale on the aerial photograph up to the northeast corner of the state, we can see how much of this, the city of Jacksonville, one of the biggest cities in the country, actually fits within that yellow line. Quite a lot. Go to the next one, Amy. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you a series of these. Uh, a little closer to home, this is superimposing our yellow line silhouette over uh, downtown Orlando and its environs. And then here, just uh, to make it even more vivid, uh, four of New York's boroughs, uh, Manhattan is in the center, that Long Island, you can see Central Park if you look closely and a green rectangle in the center, and a good bit of New Jersey on the west side of the Hudson uh, would fit inside that area. And the point of these maps, well, it's a tremendous land area. However, Americans have never been bashful about working on these big, difficult, uh, large land masses and thinking about the, uh, the future. And I'll go back to a classic example in this map of Washington, D.C., which uh, Major Pierre L'Enfant laid out for George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Um, they didn't know a lot of things about the future. They knew that they needed blocks and streets and places to build and special sites for civic buildings neighborhoods, uh, ideas for how the land meets the water, public space, squares. And that was the vocabulary that they used to put these plans together, both uh, humble streets and grand boulevards, for example. What they did not need to know uh, was that 
there would be an industrial revolution or that technology would change in dramatic ways or we would have cars or uh, women in the workplace or a uh, space age or an information age. Um, they didn't need to know those things because they were concentrating on stuff that despite the changes in society and history and technology, the things that stay the same. Uh, and that is our need to relate to one another in cities. That tradition to bring it to a closer to home was on display uh, when your founders laid out Lake Wales and they generously set aside tremendous amounts of the land uh, along the lake edge, for example, in Crystal Lake Park and Kiwanis Park uh, for public space. You can see that philosophy applied in uh, classic American planning by people like Frederick Law Olmsted, the founder of American landscape architecture, the father of American landscape architecture in many ways, or uh, his son's students years later uh, in this map of the neighborhoods, their centers and green belts of Asheville, North Carolina. So we know we can get together to think about the big green network, the shape of neighborhoods, transportation, land use, all at once. When the Olmsted brothers were hired anonymously at their fee paid anonymously by Edward Bach, uh, they did a few important things. They added to the city's grid and street networks and proposals that weren't implemented, some that were like in Druid Hills. And then they designed a planting plan for all the city streets for street tree canopy uh, and made other recommendations. They were coming along to do this work at a time when the city itself was only 10 or 15 years old. And they were uh, very ambitious. They said it should be like a city in a garden. And so very precise drawings about those public spaces I mentioned and, uh, and a real focus on the green parts. This is the tradition that we have to uh, revive in Lake Wales in order to think about that big utility service area and the future shape of the city. One thing we know is that we spread everything out across the rolling hills of citrus uh, with a little bit of development everywhere, there won't be any countryside left. So it's really important to think not about just how to spread things farther apart, but rather how to bring things closer together. And this is a little cartoon that we did years ago to illustrate the idea that your quality of life could actually go up by deliber deliberately living closer together in community and preserving uh, green that still works for uh, all its ecological services, for its scenic value, uh, for the healing power of grain in our lives, and yes, for agriculture. So um, we put these cartoons up just to illustrate the challenge ahead, thinking about how to live closer together. Well, <clears throat> the key to it is design. And Amy's going to toggle back and forth between a couple of pictures here that um, look very different but are actually quite the same, the same land use, single family detached houses, um, for example, so, uh, roughly the same density that is measured in dwelling units per acre, like you hear about in zoning hearings, roughly the same lot sizes and house sizes and parking and so on. The difference between these is really the design. Uh, on, in one example, we have the front of the house with front porches within conversation distance of the sidewalk, uh, in the other example, we have the garage door thrust out onto the front of the building. And those kind of design choices make a real difference in terms of how you experience the place. Uh, so we thought we would just show these to get at the idea that you can't just plan by the numbers. You also have to do design. Uh, when you get up in the helicopter and look down, you quickly realize that there are other components that need considering as well, like streets and stormwater. Um, this is an example from uh, in another nearby town north of here where a recent subdivision was put in and then the stormwater ponds are kind of just leftover space abandoned in the backs of the houses. Here's an example closer to home. This is actually in Lake Wales where the backs of the houses in that subdivision back up to the through going road. So when you go by on the street, you don't really get that uh, sociable impression of a community of neighbors, instead more like a crowd. So uh, walkability, of course, is a key factor in all that design stuff. And many of the things that have to do with uh, walk walkability have to do with the design of the streets, like how wide they are. Is there extra asphalt that encourages you to drive too fast? 
Uh, or is there just enough that makes it safe, but not encouraging you to treat it like it's the Indianapolis 500? You know, do you have shade on the sidewalks? These kinds of things. So that complete streets philosophy is all in Lake Wales connected on that small area that we covered in downtown and in the Northwest neighborhood. And you know, the idea of complete streets is start thinking of the street as more than just a thoroughfare for cars, but really as an address um, and a public space in its own right. Amy's gonna show you here a before and after picture uh, for the vision in Lake Wales connected of first street. Uh, right where it connects from downtown to the Northwest neighborhood, Grove Manor and that area. You see the same building in the middle of the picture, but the impression that you have of it is very different when we right size the street, we remember to include or restore the street trees. We have doors and windows opening toward the street and the like. So not just thoroughfares, but addresses. All that is just food for thought around this big question. What is your vision? for the future of Lake Wales. Okay, uh, so now it's it's gonna be time to, to hear from you all. And I'm just gonna give a couple of instructions and ground rules, and then we're gonna break into groups uh, to have some conversations. So, uh, you know, tonight I mentioned, you know, it'd be a little different from Saturday. We will be working over Google Maps instead of uh, printed maps, but similarly to what we did, we'll, we'll break into groups, have some conversations, uh, and then we're going to ask one person from each group uh, when we get back to, uh, you know, kind of summarize uh, your conversations and, and give us your three big ideas. Uh, and we have some questions to get get you started, but it, if there's other things you all want to talk about, of course, um, you know, we can we can record that that information. But we are curious to know, you know, I, I showed that summary of you know some of the the, the exercise from Saturday um, and the areas identified for growth and, and change in the city at the hands-on session. I'm curious if if any of that surprised you. Um, you know, are there anything, any areas that you would add to that or subtract uh, in your vision for for the city? Also curious to know in your vision, you know, what are the essential elements of a great neighborhood? So, you know, if we're identifying areas um, for for new homes and uh, and new businesses, you know, what what makes up a, a great neighborhood in your mind? What kinds of streets? What kinds of buildings? What kinds of public spaces? And then finally, um, just you know, want to know overall, if you can mark up the map, um, where are there opportunities for changes and improvements in Lake Wales? Um, and similarly, where are there opportunities for preservation? You know, where are there important things that you um, want to, to stay the same? And it could mean uh, historic buildings. It could also mean, uh, you know, a land conservation of uh, green space and, uh, you know, just important natural features. So we want to mark these things on the map together. Uh, so again, at the end of this, or towards the end of the session, we'll ask you to work together as a group uh, to summarize your top three ideas uh, that can be uh, reported back. So each breakout room is going to have a facilitator from the Dover Cole team, um, and the facilitators are going to be able to mark uh, the ideas on the map. Uh, and fill in the three big ideas survey. Uh, if, if you know, there's sometimes there's lots of conversations going on. There's also the chat, um, which will be recorded. So any ideas you have, you know, if someone's talking and you have an idea, you want to build upon their idea. Uh, while we're in Zoom, you can use that chat function, and that those will be notes that'll be recorded for our team. Uh, tonight, we want you to focus. Uh, uh, you know, on what you'd like to see, not just how. I know it's, you know, real easy to get tied up in the, the details of ordering how something could happen. Um, but, you know, for tonight, just for tonight, we want you to think about, you know, what that, what the, your vision is. And then, uh, you know, we, we can focus on how in the days to come, but we want to make sure that we first, you know, really get a clear view of, you know, what the community wants to see. Um, so if, if there's a lot of background noise where you are, I um, just want to remind everyone uh, if you could use your mute button when you're not speaking, that'll help uh, to be able to hear everyone else who's in your group. Um, and so, uh, again, just want to ask everyone to be open and courteous to everyone's ideas and most importantly, have fun. Uh, you know, this is a, a, you know, a, a good uh, way to, to get to know others in the city and, and learn about uh, what what uh, others want to see. So you're gonna see in a minute a breakout box like this um, and it'll have a button for join. And so uh, go ahead and press that button and we'll get started and we'll see you back here soon. Thank you all. And we're waiting just for everyone to join us from their rooms. Um, and uh, we know we had in our room that went really fast, <laughs> but a good conversation. So. 
Um, I'm curious to hear from the others, uh, the other rooms, uh, you know, what, what you all talked about. Um, and I'm not sure, I don't see, I don't know, Elise, if you, are you able to pull up the, the big idea sheets or Camilo, are you able to pull those up as we call on the tables or the rooms? Um, yeah, let me see what I can do. Great, okay. Um, There's Rob. So I'm not sure, do we know the room numbers or should we just um, call on facilitators? Hey, Rob Flom has joined us. Hi, Rob, thanks for joining in. We had group one um, and Great. Patrick Corwith was the um, the group spoke person. Okay, great. So we'll start. We'll start with Patrick's group then. If you want to um, go ahead, and we'll ask if everyone can mute themselves except for the person talking. That'll help us be able to hear the best. Uh, and yep, and Elise is um, bringing up the uh, the big ideas. Perfect. Okay. So um, uh, I guess up. Oh, this is. Is this the right one, Eric? Yeah, it looks like uh, we had two groups. Um, okay. All right, so it's the first line of um, of each of these responses okay. is the response for okay. group one. <laughs> Great. Okay. So um, so take it away, Patrick, if you want to just, uh, again, we're just curious to hear a summary of what you all talked about and, um, you know, what your ideas were. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, so improving access to neighborhood activities, use, walkability. Um, I think everybody echoes that things are very rural here. Uh, they're very spaced out. And in future development planning, I think there needs to be a concerted effort for mixed use um, lots and things where we're commerce and industry can come to these neighborhoods. I, I brought up Birmingham. Uh, my wife and I just moved back home, which is Lake Wales from Birmingham, Alabama. And a lot of the neighborhoods there are planned around sort of these commerce centers that are very walkable and the neighborhoods outstretch from these different areas, areas like Vestavia, Homewood, Mountain Brook, things like that. And, and um, it, it definitely facilitates walkability, um, industry, just all kinds of things that are, are very conducive to their development, um, their homes and, and Did we lose Patrick, Patrick? You may have lost you. <laughs> no, I just, I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Weigh in or, you know, if we want to discuss things uh, additionally, I can, I can move into the second big idea. Sure. That works yeah. well. Uh, yeah. So, and again, everybody echoed the architectural standards, you know, I, I call it the Florida typical which is, you know, just a box, a CMU box with a garage attached to it. Whereas we have this historic district, we have Mountain Lake. Um, we have these just exceptional areas with very unique and just great design standards. Maybe not design standards, but we, we have these pockets of homes that were developed, you know, custom homes. And it'd be nice to get away from just adopting the the typical architecture that exists today in Florida. Um, there are a lot of opportunities when it comes to exterior finishes, uh, roof finishes, you know, things that are cost effective that would still be capable of being implemented um, in some of these more uh, more dense and higher volume neighborhoods. 
And then the third big idea was streetscapes and canopies, especially on scenic highway. I think it was Nan or Mary Beth that brought up. I mean, when you come down 17, it, it does look like you're kind of coming into an economically depressed area. Um, you know, we, we don't have a ton of streetscaping on there. We didn't discuss this during uh, the breakout session, but Park Avenue, that connector road that has per recently been built. I mean, it's a great example. It's a beautiful roadway. I come up it almost every morning with my chocolate lab. And um, I, I think we have a lot of potential there to, to improve some of the existing areas um, with that mentality and that design in mind. Great. Uh, anyone else from group one who wants to add in anything that to, to what Patrick's been describing? Does that uh, sound right to you, Nan and Mary Beth? Patrick did a great job. And, and no right. screen children right now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'd like to urge you, uh, based on that eloquent presentation you just made, <laughs> to come to the studio at some point this week so we can put a mic on you and report record that uh, uh, on video because that was really a great explanation and uh, and also it warms my heart to hear that you're excited about the Park Avenue connector trail <laughs> so but yes sir I, I'll be down there I'm, I'm trying to juggle a couple of things but my, my intent was to come down um, at least one one day before the 20th Thanks, Great. Patrick. Okay, and so like, we'll go on to, to group two, and, and we do have three groups, so we'll have one more after this. Um, but group two was uh, uh, David and, and Jim and Terry and myself. And uh, David, you're going to give a little recap here? Yes. Um, and Amy, could you bring up our notes? So yeah, it's, uh, they're actually here. They're the second one under each one. Oh, uh, I see. Gotcha read, right there. Um, yeah. Uh, so, okay, okay, I got you. I, I'm following you now. Uh, I was saying that's not my comment. Oh, uh, so Greenway connectors. Um, you know, we 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 talked about um, on the far east side of the utilities area. There's there's potential for uh, a wildlife corridor connection, and there's uh, there's a lot of work going on in the Florida Wildlife Corridor. So if if we could uh, look at how Lake Wells develops to the east and and create some wildlife corridors, and then there's also opportunities for those corridors to extend from the east back to the west, which would also join into Bach Tower Gardens, uh, some of our preservation areas, and and if those preservation areas expand. Uh, but I think greenway connections um, are important for animals as, as well as important for people. Uh, and I think uh, the greenway connectors also give a breather between, between development. Um, so that was, uh, I think, is, is important. I think it's uh, been echoed, uh, you know, by the, the need for park systems and, and really a park system we, we need to be looking at wildlife uh, wildlife as much as for people. Um, the second uh, big idea was for development to pay for itself in the future, and that's financially responsible growth. And, and that's taking a hard look at when development comes here, not only they pay impact fees, but they, they, they add to the tax base and generate more revenue than they use in expenses and services, um, but also that it adds value to the nearby real estate. And so, uh, so we're actually all moving forward uh, when growth happens and, and the growth is positive for everybody around that. And, and, and I think growth uh, paying for itself, you know, we need to look at, you know, 10, 20 and 30 years down the line, and especially 30 years when Roads need to be paved. Uh, you know, are schools growing? As our as our uh, uh, you know city services and parks and everything is all of that being being uh, you know being um, uh, funded 
uh, by the growth we're seeing. Um, and then um, we we talked about uh, downtown, and I think we we sort of started talking about downtown. That's the the, the, the ground zero for for Lake Wales, um, and there was concern about parking downtown, and and uh, and then also concern with creating designated parking areas that that we know will be parking areas, um, but uh, but also for downtown to be a walkable town and a bikeable town. And as we encourage in development in, in the interior of Lake Wales, that uh, we, we, we create places where people can, can shop in, in, um, in commerce that, that really is, is community-based commerce and not uh, car-based commerce where you have to get on a four-lane highway onto another four-lane highway to get to those, those places. Uh, but it be you know downtown. The work we're doing now, it's it's becoming a livable space, and and so we need to be looking at the future, the people we want to attract to Lake Wales, uh, and those people you know may not they may they may not be as old as us. You know there'll be younger people. There'll be there'll be people across uh, socioeconomic classes, and and so it's. You know, building downtown for the vision of of who we want to to bring down here uh, and make those that make it a livable community. Great, thanks. And Jim, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Oh, you're good. <laughs> Great. Let's um have the last group, and uh, let's see. I don't know. It looks like Tracy, Robert, and Susan. And I'm not sure who the spokesperson. Um, so Robert's going to be our spokesperson for tonight. Great. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tracy and and, uh, and Jay was part of our group and Susan, and we had some good ideas, um, I think, and uh, good discussion. One of the things we wanted to focus on, uh, we suggested as a big idea, was historic preservation, the restoration of our old hotels uh, and finding ways to incentivize and support those kind of projects to redevelop existing structures. Uh, the, the, um, the second thing that I think was e e at least as significant was encouraging infill development. And we identified uh, several sites right around the urban center of the, of the town, just west and south of the downtown area that could be great development sites for infill uh, if they, if they're marginally feasible, I think that I personally suggested I didn't get any blowback on it, but that the, the city could consider uh, raising the the height limit um, from 45 feet, uh, which uh, I think um, Victor encountered with a chimney on or chimneys on his proposed building uh, at his pocket neighborhood because it's very it's actually very low. Uh, if you want to go more, you can't go more than three stories, really, and and it's very difficult. And since we already have a hotel that's well over 100 feet in height, uh, it seems a little bit stifling uh, that we could go, uh, you know, a few more stories if it increases the feasibility of redeveloping a property, uh, makes it more attractive to a, a, a developer. Uh, and then the third thing that we really talked about the most was creatively utilizing all our existing parklands to to increase public access to them, not necessarily to develop them for structures uh, or or special you know entertainment centers or anything, but to make them accessible and inviting uh, to make sure that they're properly landscaped, that we have a good network of bike trails. And we talked specifically about uh, extending the the rails to trails project. This is something that has been spoken about with the with the um, city planning as well as extending that trail and looping it back around into the east side to the Druid Hills neighborhood to an existing city property there and utilizing that as a park uh, that has not been um, really creatively addressed. It's just land that they mow and haven't used for for any other purpose for a long, long time. Um, and that's kind of a shame. If, um, you know, we, I have to say this on behalf of Lake Wales Heritage, because I, I'm, I'm working so closely with them to try to 
bring back the Olmstead landscapes, in, including the, the, the green streetscapes that help connect these green places so that we have parkways instead of just, you know, barren streets. Uh, creating parkways is an important part of, of greening the city and recreating the, the city in a garden concept. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't invite everybody to come to Olmstead Day in the park on the 29th, <laughs> a week from Saturday, uh, to come learn more about it and, and share in what we're doing. Uh, but that was our big ideas. Thanks. Great, thank you. And anyone else from the last group um, want to add anything in? Uh, please jump in. Uh, but I wanted to just say thank you to everyone who, who joined us tonight and you know took a took some time out of your uh, evening to to join us. I think every each of these conversations, I always learn more and uh, give, gives us more to think about. And I think tonight also went really fast, at least <laughs> went fast in our group. And so I want to encourage everyone uh, you know who who joined us tonight. If you do have time, you know we are going to be continuing to work all week um, over at the women's club. Uh, so tomorrow and Wednesday from nine to six, anytime if you've got you know twenty minutes to stop in, you can come in and look over our shoulder and see what we're doing and and you know talk more about. Uh, your ideas and you know if, if you agree or disagree with anything you've heard we, we want to hear about that um, and again all of this work that we're doing is leading towards Thursday night so if you can um, come back and join us Thursday night at six o'clock at the the Arts Council Auditorium we're going to have a, a formal presentation we're going to present back everything we've heard and and all of the drawings and illustrations that we'll work on this week uh, we'll present them then so if, if you're able to join us please do but of course record it so it'll be on the website afterwards and and give you all an opportunity to review it. So um, just, again, thank you for, for taking time tonight. Um, Victor, do you have any final words? For any who haven't, I was gonna encourage, based on the thread in this conversation, uh, all of you to look on the lakewellsenvision.com website at some of the video recordings that are there, because we put up recordings from the uh, kickoff symposium that are there, and we also have uh, a couple of talks given by Professor Bruce Stevenson and by Joe Minicosi. And Joe Minicosi's talk in particular, it's headlined Dollars and Cents, uh, is about very much about what David was describing a few minutes ago in his report about the financially responsible growth. <clears throat> so I'd really like to encourage people to take a look at those. And for those who haven't seen any of it, um, you don't want to miss uh robert's introduction to the kickoff the beginning of the symposium uh, because robert you, you basically pushed us back not just to the olmstead brothers but to a few thousand years uh to the in the history of this landscape and i think that's a would be really helpful for all of us to re-listen to to robert's three or four minute introduction at the beginning of the kickoff symposium recordings session one um, because it will remind us that you know the weight of history <laughs> that we uh, should feel the burden really to get it right for the future uh, Robert thank you again for for being there for making those comments and and letting us record it so lakewellsenvision.com I think you click on you click on events or resources to find that stuff Amy Eric uh, you click on resources on resources. So we scroll down through that, you'll see these recordings and you don't have to watch them all at once and there's not going to be a test, but it really would be helpful, healthy to go back and take a look if you haven't had a listen. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you. you. And um, just uh, have any final words from anyone on the, on the line? Okay, well, great. Well, I hope to see you all more uh, the rest of the week and hope to see many of you in person on Thursday. And uh, thank you tonight for, for joining us. And I see Eric just posted in the chat there the link to the to the website. So if you haven't yet, you can, uh, you know, click on that and, and take a few minutes to look, look over the website. But, you know, thank you all for sharing your thoughts and ideas with us tonight. Um, again, you know, every conversation you know, leads to more and more understanding of, you know, what's important. So I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night.